City Skylines launched on March 10, 2015 and was immediately hailed as the savior of the city building genre. And bluntly, it was the game that we needed after the SimCity 2013 debacle. No always on DRM, no tiny city plots, just pure unadulterated city building goodness. And it was a return to the SimCity 4 style of building, and to many, it felt like a proper sequel to that game as much as anything else. And it included a wonderful addition that SimCity had always neglected, native modding and asset support, and it was there from day one. Gone were the days of downloading mods from Simtropolis and manually installing them yourself. Instead, we were able to install mods with the click of a button from the Steam Workshop. And for many people, this was their first time ever modding a city builder, and it was bliss. And for those of us that experienced the pain of the past, we embraced this newfound freedom and downloaded a ton of mods. And on that note, excellent mods and assets were released in short order, making the game even more exciting and enjoyable than it was at release. And it seemed as though Colossal Order kicked out patch after patch after patch. And all of this was only $30. People loved it. Critics and players, it'd be hard to find anyone critical of the game. Or at least that's how I remember it. What I haven't forgotten though, is how many features weren't available at launch. How things like the day-night cycle, bikes, natural disasters, and a multitude of transit options, and even some really basic features that we'll talk about a little bit later in the video, weren't there on day one or even day 365. Now for all of those features, we had to wait for one of the many free patches that came out, or some of that sweet, sweet DLC. And my gosh, was there a lot of DLC. If you wanted to purchase a complete copy of City Skylines right now, it set you back $415.41. Luckily for you, it's on sale today, so you can get it for the paltry sum of $229.06. What a steal. But in all seriousness, that's a lot of content and it came out over a number of years. But in people's minds, a feature complete City Skylines 1 is what they're comparing City Skylines 2 to. 2 2. <laughs> so that made me wonder, what is a completely vanilla launch version of City Skylines 1 like today? How does it feel? Am I looking back with rose tinted glasses or was it really as good as I remember? And how does it stack up to the launch version of City Skylines 2? A game that was notoriously plagued with issues such as poor performance and missing features. A game that gave many of us the general sense of, well, this isn't quite ready yet. Let's find out by doing a little experiment. We're gonna download the original version of City Skylines straight from launch day to see how it stacks up. So let's get that running. But how do we do that? Unfortunately, it's not simple to just roll back to an old version of a game on Steam. Something that I think is a really big problem from a video game preservation standpoint. And Colossal Order has not uploaded old versions of the game as betas that you can easily opt into. So if you wanna roll back to an earlier version of the game, you must grab an old repo, download it using a hidden command prompt within Steam, and then hope that any third-party launchers will not get in the way of the game launching. I'm looking at you, Paradox Launcher. Now, it took me a few hours to figure out how to get version 1.0.5, the launch day version, to work on my system, but after a bit of trial and error, I was able to figure it out, and I can't wait to show you how it works. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's video sponsor and longtime channel supporter, Raycon. It's summertime and I'm getting outside as often as possible, whether it's to tend the garden, mow the lawn, or just to touch grass. And regardless of what I'm doing out there, I'm always listening to music with my Raycon Everyday Earbuds. If you haven't pulled the trigger on a pair in the past, now is a great time to check them out. They've just launched a new upgraded model which includes excellent new features such as active noise cancellation, a new ergonomic design, and multi-point connectivity, which I personally love because it means I can pair them to both my phone and my laptop. Best of all, they're priced right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. I really love the earbuds case. It can charge wirelessly and can quick charge the earbuds. The earbuds also have three sound profiles for different types of music, which is great because I have eclectic tastes. Recently, I've been listening to this superb new album by Master Plan Music called Driftless, as well as a bit of Van Sire and some Willow. I've also been listening to a bit of Mitski, some Rit Mamni and some Caliucci's, and the earbuds make everything sound fantastic. If all of this sounds good to you, click on the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com slash cityplanner to get 15% off your Raycon purchase plus free shipping. Once again, that's buyraycon.com slash cityplanner. And here we are in City Skylines 1.0.5. You can tell that right down here. That is the actual launch day version of City Skylines. It didn't come out at 1.0.0. So let's dive in a little bit and take a look at some things that might be a little bit different. And we can see the tools. We have the map editor and the asset editor right off the bat. So we will take a look at the map editor at, the, at a minimum. I just kind of want to see how that looks. We also have our content manager, and this is something that looks wildly different. Under options, 
We do have the absolute highest quality version of the game that we can have, so we have high level of detail. I'll keep things at the defaults right now. Uh, the one thing that is curious, we have our color correction override and we can actually select a different color correction. So once we get into the game, we're absolutely gonna take a look at that. And then we have a news feed right here that says test. I'm very curious to know if that is actually what it said day one, but it, it says nothing right now, which is pretty interesting. And then we have the Paradox Store. So let's dive into a brand new game. And I, like I mentioned, I want a tropical map. I, I am noticing one thing though. It's not really telling me what the map is. So I know based on uh, the content manager what these maps are supposed to be. So Sandy Beach is tropical one. So we'll probably do this one, but it doesn't tell me that it's a tropical map. It also doesn't say whether it's European or North American. And I think, if I, if I recall correctly, European maps and the European theme generally was added a couple months after release. So a you know, very bare bones what we're getting right here. But we do have the general map information, including the fertilities, the resources that are available, and uh, the suitability for different types of networks. And now that we're in here, there's one thing I want to point out. So this is pre-day-night cycle, pre-weather. So we're not seeing a rainy day. We're not going to see any night. We're not going to see that the, the, the game change at all in terms of the atmosphere. This is what you see is what you get. There are good and bad parts to this. There is a reason why there's that mod that brings back the original coloring of the sky. And that is because it looks much more bright, much more vi vibrant, much more colorful. But I'll tell you what, it's strange that the sun is always right there. And that is that is just what you get. Anyway, this is City Skylines, so let's just get started. And the first thing you've always got to do is draw that little segment of road so that we can unlock the rest of our roads. And I'm going to draw this out with some dirt roads. And what I'm thinking is on a map like this, I, you know, I, I'd probably want to build close to the water. Ideally, I think it would be over here by the beach, but we'll just build over here. And I'll go along this coastline. Now, I don't know if I can. I don't think I can see the terrain right now. I don't even know where I would see it. There's, it seems like there are fewer me uh, options in the info views. So I guess the only way I can figure out the terrain is to actually look around. Very difficult. There's no way for me to adjust this. I don't even see the landscaping tools at all. So I, <laughs> I don't know that we have any. In fact, I, I want to say that those were added. I'm not 100% positive. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's <laughs> so bad, so bad, so disrespectful, the topography, but we're going to just roll with it. Okay, we have residential demand. We just need to build a really basic city. So what I think we'll do is we'll just build a couplet and we'll meet up with our highway out here and hopefully we can make a nice turn. And this is bizarre. I'm not getting my guideline from the roads. Seems like the only guidelines I have are the grid and the only snapping option I have is just to toggle it on or off. So I guess I could try to just like eyeball it. That looks okay, but I don't know how I get this next one to look. I mean, that's fine. I, maybe the other way that I could do this would be using the freeform road tool because that should give me a consistent snapping every time or a consistent option. Boy, oh boy, that stinks. <laughs> That's not ideal, not ideal. Okay, well, we need power, we need water, we need sanitary sewer. I think we're gonna build just the real basics. So water pumping station will pump water. We can see there's very slight movement in our water from left to right. So I will pump water right here and then I'll dump raw sewage down here. Perfect. <laughs> and then we'll just link this up with a water pipe that goes right underneath the road, right where it belongs. The last thing that we need to get this thing going is going to be power. And we've got two options available to us. We've got a coal power plant and a wind turbine. I'll just plop one of those here. And then I'm going to run a power line right along this future highway. And it is not going at a 90. I don't know what's going on. You kind of see it's I thought it was going to snap, snap to the grid, which I can do if I don't start on that power line. That is bizarre. That made absolutely no sense. Let's uh, let's build a small grid out here. And then I'll put some water pipes underneath the road right where they belong. 
And then we just need a little bit of residential. I'm gonna leave the, the coast for some commercial. And boy, just so disrespectful of the, of the topography, but there's just nothing that I can do. Now, I think we're gonna play until we get transit because that'll give us most of the gameplay aspects. While we are, uh, while this is filling in and while we still have money, I think I'm gonna start a little industrial area back here as well. Now I can see that it looks like we have ore deposits right here. We've got some trees over there. So we, we can start to think about some of those things. Oh my goodness, this is impossible to make nice roadway connections. You're just, you're just eyeballing things and guessing and hoping for the best. It's really frustrating. <laughs> And I want to follow underneath the roads. Interestingly, I have no toggling options and it feels like it's really snapping hard. And I'm not sure if this is just me being stuck in the city skylines two world or if the snapping is just really strange. I understand it. Like it's water pipes. They come in prefab sections that are at specific angles. So you shouldn't be able to have a curved water pipe. I always think it's funny when I see someone with anarchy curving their water pipes but that is also extreme like i should be able to I should be able to have shorter segments that's that was strange <laughs> it looks like we have pretty healthy demand for everything i'm gonna keep building i kind of want these grids to come together so i think i'm gonna build them out a little ways we have dirt roads and like i always recommend in city skylines one just build with dirt roads until you have the money to upgrade them Oh, and I will not lie. I'm not sure, again, if this is the vanilla road tools or what, but this is very difficult to uh, to get our snapping right. But I, I can take a break from it because we just hit Little Hamlet, which is nice to see. So now we can adjust our taxes and our loans. We got garbage, healthcare, education, all things that we're going to need. And we've got the space for it, which is great as well. So let's begin by doing the thing that we always have to do in City Skylines. And once we have the budget and the economy unlocked, we've got to we've got to crank the taxes to 12 percent. No one's going to mind the extra taxation, but you will mind not having the money. So just looking at this, it's pretty basic, but it seems like everything. I mean, it's easy to understand, which I really appreciate. That's something that I've, I've always felt like City Skylines one excelled at pre industries DLC. I felt like once industries came out, it became much more challenging to understand the budget. It seemed like there were a lot of wild fluctuations and importing and exporting became so difficult to understand that things were jumping around. This is really basic and I appreciate that. The budget too, not a lot to it. Now, a couple of things I'm noticing right off the bat, this is very similar to City Skylines 2. Healthcare, I think includes both healthcare and death care, and I can't adjust the budget. Although, yeah, yeah, it says ambulances and hearses. So I don't like that decision in the second game, and it looks like it was the same in the first one. So we were running out of power, so I think we have to fix that before we do anything else. I'll just add another turbine up here. We're gonna build a landfill site because this is now a requirement. We're gonna start to see lots of pandemonium if we don't address this right away. And this menu, I don't know what about it, looks off to me it looks like it's too big which is a thing and oh my goodness the topography disrespect is just extreme is there still i feel like there should be a way that i can see the terrain and i just i don't think it's here i think it's missing that is crazy so it just is what it is all this lumpy bumpy madness Let's see what else is in the info view. So we've got electricity, we've seen that one, and water. Now we have our garbage, very easy to understand. Now, the one of the reasons I'm curious about this is I mentioned the healthcare. We do have death care, which is interesting because I don't have access to that just yet. And the menu, I, I, I get what's different. So when I'm in the info views, we have these tabs up here. And when I go to the healthcare menu, the tabs are missing and the menu doesn't resize, it's just there. And also, even though I've disabled the tooltips, they're coming up now, which is fascinating. <laughs> so other than that, we have wind, which just so shows where the wind is high. There's no directionality to it. Traffic, no percentages, just whether it's high or low. And then pollution, this average ground pollution, 29%. That seems way higher 
than it normally is. So I don't know what they're averaging out of it. It's just averaging the tiles. We can figure that out fairly easily, actually. Let's zone and I'll click on pollution after. Oh my goodness, I can't do things. It's one or the other, it's zoning or the tooltip. I'm gonna pause it and let's just add a bunch of zoning. And now we'll look at this 29%. Yeah, I have no idea what that 29% average ground pollution means. <laughs> so maybe that is bugged. So for noise pollution, again, it seems like there's an arbitrary number. I have no idea what that means. So that gives us the ability to purchase a tile, which we are probably gonna wanna do. We also get districts, policies, more loans, industrial specializations, which I definitely wanna check those out. We get a fire department, police department, unique buildings. So now that we have that, let's, first of all, we know that we have to add our police and fire. I think I'm gonna try to make that, make a little bit of a city services complex over here. And this is something I've honestly really missed in cities too, is being able to start with a dirt road and just upgrade it and not have it demolish everything. And that's because the dirt roads are actually two units wide in cities one, even though they appear to be less than that. And as on that note, I, I appreciate all the ruining. And just kind of looking at the graphics here, the ruining on the sides of the road, nothing feels all that clean. And I really hated ruining in City Skylines 1. So it's it's more of a, an appreciation after having City Skylines 2 under my belt for a while, because everything feels really clean in that game. I've also got all the different sprites, the grasses. I appreciate that I can actually see and feel heights. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just that the cliff texture is really dark and it does not look like the cliff texture, I guess that it looks different. Something feels off about the cliff texture, but I can see the depth. It seems like with the lighting, something about it allows me to see the different elevation changes. It looks like there's just, it just feels like it's not flat. I can tell by looking at it that the, there are rolling hills here. I think it's a, it's a little bit darker, something. It feels like the lighting is better in this game, I guess just in general. And honestly, it feels like, the, like I mentioned earlier, the lighting in this version of the game is better than the lighting in later versions of the game, which is very interesting. It's why we had the Daylight Classic mod. Honestly, it's why we had the Daylight Classic mod. Now, I mentioned the last couple of info views, and it looks like we actually unlocked some more. So this one right here is Outside Connections. And it's funny, this is a not a great label. Now, it looks like we've got our commercial along this road here, and it is importing goods. And then we have, we're actually importing my guess is the inputs into our factories right here. Exporting is only occurring from here and it's exporting goods. We also have districts. We are gonna paint some districts and our natural resources. We finally get that view. We have some ore, we've got our forest and basically no fertile land. So I guess that's just that's just the way Colossal Order rolls with their default maps. There's like a little bit, but nothing, almost nothing, which is wild because this is a tropical map or a tropical looking map. <laughs> we hit tiny town, we get decorations, we get a couple more policies and a high school, so we've got a lot of stuff to add. Let's start with the police station though. I don't want this whole town to be a town of criminals, so we'll add that, and then we'll add our schools as well. We have our super basic elementary school, 340 people eligible here to attend it, so we'll give them the opportunity to do so. We'll place that relatively centrally. And then we'll have to wait a little while for our high school, but we do have our decorations unlocked, which I feel like that's not what it was called before. That gives us parks and that gives us props. They're considering, wait, 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 wait. They're considering trees props and there are no props and we have no landscaping tools. <laughs> that is bizarre. Okay, well, let's place a couple of parks. We gotta get our leisure up. And honestly, it seems like a lot of these parks, we get the small park, small playground, plaza with trees. A lot of these, I guess I'm surprised they're all there day one. A lot of these, I, I, I didn't realize that these were base game assets, except for maybe like the bouncy castle park and the, and the carousel park. There's a level of whimsy uh, with the base game that I guess isn't necessarily there in City Skylines 2 that I kind of miss. And some of the assets, I mean, the Bouncy Castle Park is just really gaudy. <laughs> I guess I'm not surprised that it's one of the first assets that we got. But let's grab, let's say we'll grab the large playground and we'll toss that back here. We'll, uh, we'll actually, actually, let's go with a plaza. 
the park with trees. We'll break up the grid right there and then we'll give everyone, a, do we have a small playground? Yeah, right here. Small playground, we'll use a bit of eminent domain and centrally locate that. Now I am curious, we do have paths. We have our both our pavement path and our gravel path. And I'm just wondering, can we attach this? Maybe this isn't one of the parks that we can attach to. I wanna say this one right here, the large playground has a couple of attachment points and that, yeah, that is a vanilla, that is a vanilla day one feature. That was a, that's a huge miss in my opinion for Skylines to not having parks that do that. And none of these parks have fences, although there are no fences in the game. There are no props at all. The only props we have are trees. <laughs> Let's try our districts out because we have districts. We have our blobby districts and we have a few different options. I'm going to add a district right here. I believe this was ore. And again, I can't use more than one tool at a time. That is frustrating. So this will be our ore district. And then we'll have a forestry district over here. And then let's see over here. We've got just a little, little spot of farmland. So we'll make this farmland. Uh, let's, let's rename this farm or, and this one right here forestry. So I think I want to say that those are the, the districts that we have unlocked right now. Oh, we don't have ore. Interesting. Now, frustratingly, I can't see where my district is. I can just see a label. Oh, that's so frustrating. I can't do anything. I should be able to just zone this in and then I want to build a farm as well. Now, these assets are brutal. <laughs> <laughs> these are not my favorite assets. I always thought that the specialized industry was very, very strange. And you, it's just, you have these neon green fields, random uh, cows. And then these, I don't even know what you'd consider this. It looks, it almost looks like a futuristic farm. You know, and, and truthfully, that's one thing. Just like, let's, let's take a moment to take a look at the assets in general. There's a lot of repetition. Like this asset right here, this is a complaint I've heard a lot about City Skylines too. The assets are too repetitive and we're seeing it right here. Same asset, different color roof, but only two colors. Oh, three colors for the roofs here. Uh, these look kind of like American ranches. Maybe they're rotated. Maybe this is, maybe this is two different assets. It seems like, yeah, maybe this is the same asset as this one, but the difference is the garage door is right here on this asset. On this side, they've spun the building around and move the garage door right here on this one, it's blank. So it looks like you have two different options. And then you get stuff like this. I don't even know, like, so these look vaguely American. This to me looks European, maybe like something you'd see in, I don't know, on the Mediterranean. This one looks maybe Californian. So maybe this would be kind of Midwestern American. This is West Coast American. This is maybe Scandinavian. This, I don't know where that is. Maybe Northeast US. It kind of looks like something you could see in the Northeast. It's kind of placeless. This one could be anywhere. <laughs> and then we, we have some Victorian looking stuff here. These assets are super familiar. I remember using a lot of these assets in Nicolay Bay and ridding myself of some of them. One that I really dislike is this one. This one looks almost like it's from the UK. And this one's just kind of crazy looking. I don't even know what that is. Now, obviously they're not conforming to the terrain. That is as it always was. And then we've got this asset, which I've always loved. It's a nice looking commercial asset. It's just, it's interesting to see the variety, but also the lack of variety of assets that we, we have in the base game right here. Also, it just seems like it's a mixture of European and North American assets. And it makes me wonder, if it actually is a mix, if we've got some of uh, some assets that were moved over to the European set down the line for our generic industry. Again, lots of the uh, it seems like these assets, the assets that we got are kind of what we had for a long time. They're uh, these all look super familiar and very cartoony and it's kind of fine. It's kind of fine. It's kind of what the game was going for that cartoony aesthetic. But okay, I said I wanted to take a look at some of the decorations, the, <laughs> the decorations, the trees. Let's line this road and let's get this upgraded to be a proper uh, bi-directional road or even a highway, because ultimately that's what I want this to be. So we've got large bush, small bush, 
palm plant, which this is one that I've always loved. We use this one a lot in Verde Beach, changes colors. We've got our just normal palm tree, small beach. And I love that we can overlap uh, that, that big miss in launch skylines too, in my opinion. I guess we're Boomtown now. We have our public transit. We get our highways and a couple of interchanges. So that's great. And a cemetery, which will lead to place right away. A few more policies and our ore industry so we can do that as well. I'm a little curious though. A generic broad-leafed tree, tree with leaves, and then an oak tree. These look the same. <laughs> let's, let's see. Okay, okay. Here is generic tree, and I guess it changes colors as you place it. Looks like it's the same tree. It's not even rotating. Here is oak. I was going to say, maybe it's just that it's bigger, but what is the difference between these two? Those look identical. And I don't think we have both these options in later versions of the game. That is absolutely baffling. And look at this one. This one. Okay. 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 Hold on. These are the same. They, these are a hundred percent the same. I don't know why these are both in here. We also got Alder 2. Wait, what? Alder 2, but not Alder 1. So wait, is Small Beach Alder 1? Alder 2. <laughs> well, that's baffling. I guess it kind of looks the same. I don't know. That is strange. And then we've got Tree with Leaves 2, which is that Alder? I don't know. The trees are an absolute mess. Not only are they called props when they're actually trees, but they just very, very, very bizarre. Okay, let's, I'm gonna zone the last couple of things that we have here. So we know that we're gonna have our ore industry. And I appreciate, there's a little bit of a pause when the building occurs in this. Even though we've got maxed out demand, it doesn't just go bang. Everything is, everything is uh, zoning in at once. Again, a City Skylines 2 thing that I don't like that even this very first version of City Skylines 1 got right. There's a little bit of a pause there. It's just, oh boy. <laughs> I do not love these assets. These are not great. It is, it is, it is what it is. <laughs> now, one thing I'm noticing, I don't see any road names. So the road names are just missing. And the budget, I'm not even doing anything. I'm just making a boatload of money. Like the, it's, the game is, is incredibly easy as long as you don't go too fast. Now we were supposed to place a cemetery and I don't think that we have any schools yet, but it feels like we have little to no penalty for that. Oh, it's just the high school. We have our elementary school. So I'll place a high school right here. Now that gets me curious. The education pipeline in City Skylines 2 is super skewed towards elementary school. Interestingly, because I'm clicked on the high school, I can't see the elementary, but I'm guessing if I exit out, now I get the tab. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. So we have way more, so we have a whole bunch of capacity at our elementary school. Our high school has three times, more than three times that, and way more eligibility. So people are making their way through the system, but everyone's got what appears to be similar odds. 41% are gradu have graduated from elementary school. And in the school, it's 150 people. So everyone that's eligible is going there. It's very simple, but it's also very easy to understand. So I kind of miss that, truthfully. That, that That's a, a good mechanic if it's, if it's that easy to get. Now, I mentioned wanting to upgrade this to a highway. So let's go ahead and do that. And maybe we'll even build an interchange right here or right here. Now, I forgot the two lane highways came at a later date. So all we have is this super basic uh, highway right here, this three lane highway. And then for our intersections, we've got a large roundabout, <laughs> two of those, and then a cloverleaf and a three-way junction, which is not, not very many. And I want to say that those are pretty terrible. So let's go ahead and we're just going to upgrade this and then we'll build an intersection afterwards. It's not letting me do it. Can I do a, a well, I can't do that either. How about a two lane road? I can't do that. Uh, a one way road. Can I upgrade this? I mean, I can do this. Okay. I think I remember this. So you can't take a two way, a bi-directional road and convert it to a one way. You can only have a bi-directional road upgrade to a bi-directional road and vice versa. So if we wanted this to become a highway or a two lane road, I think we have to straight up eliminate it. So be, I want to test that theory. So I'll choose the two lane bi-directional 
And sure enough, I can upgrade that no problem. So we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. And then I'll just reverse that. I, oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> I want to say the first mod that I got was uh, the mod that allowed you to reverse the direction of the roads, which, eek, eek. Not being able to do that is just wild. So the only way that I can have this road going in the opposite direction is to draw it in the direction I want it to go. So I have to draw this from here, this direction. And after that, I can upgrade it. Now I'm, I'm using, I'm using one of the normal streets because it's much easier to snap with those because they actually have snapping. And I think, I think, I think we've got to test all of this. We've got the inter the interchanges are going to be what really tests my skills and my memory of this game. So this one's kind of tight. I don't want to I don't want to deal with that. But let's just build a super basic interchange right here. Shouldn't be all that difficult. So I, I'll temporarily we'll build them a road so that they can leave, and then I'll build this road up and over, um, or I won't. <laughs> so I can't elevate a dirt road. And this reminds me, am I, do we not have tunnels too? We don't have tunnels. So I can go up and down, but I can't, I, I can't go underground. There's no tunnel. So there's no elevated gravel road. There's no tunnels for any road. And I can't change the elevation step. It's three or none. <laughs> Serenity now. <laughs> okay, we'll just roll with that. And that'll be our bridge. And I think knowing how crude our tools are, I can't snap to roads or anything. I'm going to try to just draw in nice ramps from these couple of nodes. And I forgot this is not going to work. So I've got to go from the right direction. So we have to choose our directionality up front. And the highways have absolutely zero guidelines. So I guess this is my best, this is the best I can do. And I, I don't have a guideline from this road. So the best I can do is this. Oh, that's backwards. <laughs> and then maybe I use the free form to make the final connection. Oh, that is ugly. I don't know how I would improve that though. The other thing I could do is actually use the ramp. I don't know that that is any better at all. We'll roll with it. That's that's the best I can do. That stinks. Now for this other side, I'll try to freeform both these. These ramps are crazy. That's that's about the best I can do. And honestly, I would love to do earthwork to make this look more reasonable, but there's I just I don't have the option. I don't have the option. So this is an intersection, an interchange rather in uh, City Skylines 1.0. <laughs> so, you know what? This kind of makes me look at my original city, the, the the very first one that I built that I shared on stream in a video a while back. I feel bad for picking on myself so much because how could I respect the topography? I can't change it and I can't see it. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. We've got our buses, those unlocked fairly early. So, okay, we've got our bus terminal right here, our bus depot rather, get some water to that. And then we'll create a bus route and I'll just, just do something super basic. Why don't we just, we'll just do a, a loop. We don't need to go super hard here. And there we go, a super basic bus route. I'm gonna send another route in the same direction or the opposite direction will mirror those stops. And both lines are blue. So I wanna change it. Why is that box over here? It feels like normally it's not over there. I can't. <laughs> so similar to how I can't rename the roads, I can't rename the bus route, I can't change the color. All bus routes are just light blue. That is fascinating. I totally forgot about that. Can I rename anything? Like, or is it just nothing can be renamed? Yeah, I can rename this Phillips factory, no problem at all. But I'm also curious about traffic controls. So under traffic, we can see lots of traffic right here using this connection, unsurprisingly. We can't see percentages, so it just is what it is. We also can't adjust priority roads. I don't know that we can add signals. How do we get a signal if we want it? So, okay, okay. If I upgrade this, maybe we get a signal. No, it's because it is a two lane road. But this road, the four lane road, that should give us, yeah, that gives us lights. 
but I have no way to turn it off. So just, we get a light or we don't. <laughs> you basically, you use this road if you want lights. If you want to get rid of them, you downgrade the road. That is such a crazy mechanic, but that's the way it is. So we talked a little bit about the LUTs and I do want to take a look at those. So this is no color correction override. And if we go into our first one, this is temperate. Oh boy, that looks absolutely terrible. I cannot believe, <laughs> I cannot believe that this is a thing. That is brutal, absolutely terrible. I don't know who, anyone who would have wanted to use this. Boreal, which it's bluer. It looks like it's just kind of a cool tint. It's, it's workable. It's definitely strange on this map. And then we have our tropical, which just looks redder. I don't know if this is at all different. So this is tropical. That's nothing. I don't know. To my eyes, it kind of looks the same, which makes me wonder if the override is literally overriding whatever the map maker's default was. That is very, very odd. <laughs> but I think that I, it must be how it's working. And I want to say that this feature was also removed from later versions of the game. You can't do this without using a mod. It's kind of strange that they would leave this drop down in there if you couldn't use it. Now, the very last thing that I'm a little bit curious about, we've got these couple of districts and we have policies. Can we apply the policies to a district? And it looks like we can. Yeah, we have our districts and this is just to the farm and we can pop that out. Ooh, <laughs> it changed colors. That is bizarre. We found a bug. <laughs> I'm sure that was hot fixed right out of there. <laughs> Now I want to switch gears and take a look at the map editor and then we'll come back and we'll kind of look around here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Before we do that though, I noticed one thing. We only have our free camera option. The other option, the one that kind of gave you those, it's not really cinematic, but just kind of a random tour around your city, it's, it's missing, which is kind of funny. I also want to take a look at the areas because you can only unlock the nine default tiles in the, in the vanilla game here. And I can't, I don't know that I can tell much about it. I can't see the topography. I can just see the building, the buildable area, the natural resources, and that's it. <laughs> like there's nothing else there for me. Let's save this and then we'll come back. <laughs> Looks like there's a focus issue here. So you click on save and the save game menu pops up behind it. And then we'll save that. And then let's head back to the main menu. So underneath tools, we've got the map editor and the asset editor. So let's just check this out. We'll make a new map. I'm really curious uh, to see how this looks. And we can choose a theme. And it looks like it's just the color corrections applied, which makes me think that indeed, yes, there are themes, but they, they're they very strange. Now, interestingly, I chose the temperate theme and it doesn't look gross. <laughs> so I don't know if it's just that the tropical theme didn't work well with it. In terms of what I'm seeing, the map editor looks identical to what you would normally see. Okay, so let's add some water and some ground. And the, yeah, the cliff texture is definitely different. It looks, wow, that looks absolutely terrible. So it seems like at some point they must have improved this because that cliff texture looks brutal. It's, it's just really ugly. The water too, what is going on here? I'll raise it up. Okay, that looks better. The cliff texture still looks, it looks like it's underwater. It's weird. It's just really not attractive. Now, interestingly, we have our landscaping tools here. So it seems like these were just gated at some point in time and they decided to release them out and into the wild. Very strange decision right there. But truthfully, it kind of tracks the ore and all of the all of the elements. These are, are locked and they always were. And it, it was one of those things that never made a lot of sense to me. Same thing with the tree brush that is available here, but is gated in the game and never got unlocked. We've also got our road options, but we can only place highways, which I just don't understand why that we why it's like that. Also, only two of the intersections. So the roundabouts that we saw earlier can't do those. We can do train tracks. We can do our ship lanes and the air, airplane connections as well. So yeah, it seems like day one, all the tools were there to make a great map. Everything, you can make a realistic map with height maps or really, uh, really work your own map, uh, completely customizing the terrain. So it's great to see that there. Big miss with City Skylines too, not to have that. So let's head back into our map. Oh my goodness. 
The map is not here. I can't load the game. I wonder if it's in the content manager. It is Rockfield 2024 and it is on. I turn it on and off. It's not there. I don't have any of my saves there. All of my saves. So that must have been a day one bug. Wow. Maybe that's why my initial save looks so incomplete. I couldn't load it up a second time. Well, with that in mind, I think we'll just load into a blank version of the map. And with that, we have City Skylines 1.0. It is, it's been an interesting journey. The game is still fun. It still holds up, a lot of frustrations, but it, it kind of shows you a difference in the design philosophy between City Skylines 1 and 2. It seems like with City Skylines 1, they went lighter on the mechanics, lighter on everything, but really tried to dial them in and make sure that they were working. And it's not bug free. There are some pretty significant bugs in this game. City Skylines 2, on the other hand, though, it seems like they went really broad, tried to give you a whole bunch of information, a lot of assets, a lot of different transportation options, a lot of everything, and there's just a lot more bugs as a result. So it kind of makes me look at City Skylines 2 a little bit differently, and I uh, feel very appreciative of all the things that we had, but at the same time, the game had a lot of issues, a lot more than this one. I think that the issues that are here still allow you to have a, a good gameplay experience Although you can't load your city again, so I guess that's the thing. <laughs> and I guess I hope that you found this interesting. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I want to thank you for your time today. This is kind of a weird video, but I've really enjoyed putting it together. And I hope that you've enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments if you did. And maybe we'll do some other strange videos like this one in the future. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.